Hey guys, if you guys were tuning in from the FP Black install, um, I did this at the same day as the Flex Fuel um, install. Um, this is going to be just the Flex Fuel part. This is going to go over just wiring it how I did it on my GD um, Hawkeye. Um, you'll also need to, to just get the full functionality of the Cobb um, kit. You just need to buy a harness from Ben West. He's local to me here in Oklahoma City. But the benefits of that is it does the same thing as the Cobb kit, but also comes with a multi-function gauge. So tuners can also use this. You just have to change the signals. Um, you just need a laptop and an adapter if applicable to get the same thing. But once you change the signal that the ECU reads from this harness and the flex fuel sensors, your tuner, regardless of who it is, will be able to tune it. I don't know if times changed, but on my 2016 WRX, I have had Mikey Body and Junior Barrios from JR Tuned um, tune it just fine, send me a map, and read the information um, as needed. So, whatever you read out there, I know that. Everyone decides to go Cobb just because it's the easiest. If you decide to go this route, it's going to take a little bit more work. But if you are able to source the ECF-1 kit from Jordan Cutberth from Define Performance, then he can cut you a good deal. And you could probably even save $150 on this kit, including the harness, compared to the Cobb kit. So um, just want to preface that. I've been trying to kind of push that in my local Oklahoma Subies group but also you know the other national Facebook groups but everyone decides to go call but here's an alternative you guys if you guys are interested so uh, thanks for tuning in again so for the ECF one and the three gauge pod so the wires are gonna be a little bit short from factory um, you guys will have to extend them just to get the power to the fuse box uh, the red wire is for a 12 volt um, basically to power it on the black one's going to be the ground um, but you guys will need to um, extend it out because it's going to be way too short so what i did was i extended it out by 44 inches so there's at least plenty of play to go from the middle of the where the clock usually would sit all the way down to the ground right here and then you'll also need one of these adapters um, for the fuse box so you just need a crimping tool and uh, what I did was I use a butt splice and uh, I use a heat gun to uh, shrink it in there so it's uh, nice and tight um, I also have like a high temperature uh, uh, tape you guys don't really need that you can just use normal electrical tape but um, yeah that's just to extend them out the rest of these I wrapped up because um, these are primarily these other colored wires like the white one. It's just for dimming. I'm not really using that um, You guys can if you want um, The rest of them it's uh, basically in functionality if you're running like an aftermarket ECU um, You can use them and splice them into the wires But if you're not using them just wrap them all like how I did here and then you can just tuck them into You know one of the nooks or crannies Okay, so we're inside the car uh, so we can provide power to the gauge what we're just doing the whole car is a 12 volt um, System so that's what they mean on the user manual if you look at it for the ECF one or ECB one for the GD chassis basically what I just used was the um, The rear wiper which is this bottom one and I just put that 10 amp uh, fuse on top and then I just plugged it in there and then for the grounds since you want to choose something that is metal and is to the chassis I'm just gonna use this bolt right here there's a bolt right under where you you know pull the lever for the engine um, that's a 10 I think so you just you do that put the 10 through here and then that should be good for the ground okay I made a mistake on the earlier clip so you're saying that these cables were auxiliary these uh, two connectors right here, the uh, three pin, that one is going to be for the, um, what was it? 
Three pins is the fuel pressure sensor right here. And then the four pin is for the ethanol sensor. So we already wired it through the firewall. It's pretty easy because we just basically use the existing uh, wires to fish through the um, through the firewall. So it's pretty easy. The GD is a little bit easier than the VA, but what I suggest is just using an existing wiring, uh, uh, existing wire, taping it to that wire if it's got some play, and then use it to push and pull the um, the cabling you need. So once we get this plugged in, um, it should be able to work, but we don't have the battery connected just because we still have the fuel lines to do. Um, but yeah, we have the ground connected. It's down here now. You can see that black wire, and then there's that um, fuse to wire um, adapter. It's already in there, but yeah. Um, let's go ahead and finish this one up. So with that, basically the ECF1, ECF1 is done. On this end, we just have to put all this stuff back together. Um, we still need to figure out how, what to do with the switch to be able to switch maps on the fly. Um, it's this lime green wire, because here's the switch. Where's the switch at? Right here, and it's spliced to this lime green wire. Um, not really sure what it is. This one right here with my index finger. And over here, not really sure where it goes, but um, I guess we'll just have to figure that one out. All right, we are still at it. We still got the fuel lines remaining. Um, it's Sunday night, got work tomorrow. But right now, the only thing that we have remaining is the, um, the fuel lines so we got the flex fuel sensor the ecf1 um all connected and everything so basically here it is i don't know it's kind of hard to see but um if you look right here i have it all connected and here's the wiring for it it's kind of a cluster right now but basically whenever you guys buy the harness from ben it's gonna have the um the wires that match up to plug into the ecf1 so i had these bundled up together earlier but um, i ended up using bullet connectors here and they'll all correspond to the uh, same color except for purple purple and pink are going to go together but the rest of them they should match up exactly so you have brown you have yellow and then you have what is this purple and pink so those three if you guys connect the um, ECF one um, directly to the fuse box here in the driver's side and um, you ground it you're not going to need the uh, ones that Ben create uh, the harness that Ben gives you so this is the ECF one side so it's kind of like a clusterfuck with all of these wires but i'll show you guys from under the car what's actually going to go on the secondary o2 sensor all right so you guys just saw the ecf1 side of the flex fuel sensor within the in, inside the car the next connectors are going to go to the tgvs the comp ones are going to be similar to this they're going to be similar to the cob ones um they'll plug in here one on the driver's side And one on the passenger side right here. So that's uh, two part, uh, that's, well, two parts. First part inside the car, second part, the TGVs. Then that secondary O2 sensor that I was talking about, it's gonna be under the car. And basically it's gonna be plugged in right here. So that's the transmission right there. Here's the transmission brace right here. And then what you have to do is basically use the ECF1 plug. We have it right there. It's kind of hard to see right there where the light is. 
so it plugs in directly to that O2 sensor because um, that's not really being used so let me see if I can if I can point at it you guys can see where my finger is at right there so that's the connector so that's the plug-and-play harness um, it's not as straightforward as Cobb's, but um, way better just because you gain the functionality. 